Thank you for tuning in to Holland Chapel Online. My name is Nick Calloway. I'm one of the pastors here at HC. We love being able to offer this resource, but please don't let it take the place of gathering with your local church. What a privilege it is to be known, to be seen, and to enjoy the fellowship of believers. But while you're here, we hope that God's word is encouraging to you and that you'll respond to his message. Have a great day. All right, church, we've got Kenzie Moore. Uh, Kenzie has grown up here at Holland Chapel learning about God in HD Kids. Uh, one night at, her, at home, her mom and dad walked her through the good news of Jesus, and she accepted him as her Savior. And she's excited to show everyone here today that she is a child of God. Kenzie, have you trusted in Jesus with all your heart? Yes, sir. Upon your profession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, I baptize you. My sister, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Vivian Vavra has come to church with her parents. Uh, she started asking her mom lots of questions about Jesus and salvation, and she trusted him as her Savior. She wants to live like Jesus and show others his love. Vivian, have you trusted in Jesus with all your heart? Yes, sir. All right. Upon your profession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, I baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Riley Kieselhorst was talking with her grandma about how Jesus is the answer. Uh, then on a Wednesday evening, they spoke with Pastor Luke, and she prayed and asked Jesus to be her Savior. Jesus has given her happiness, and he is her best friend for life. Riley, have you trusted in Jesus with all your heart? Yes, sir. All right. Upon your profession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, I baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Gracie Wright is a senior at Glen Rose. In the past, she knew of Christ, but after her boyfriend brought her to HC, she came to know Christ as her Savior, and that has changed everything. Jesus has given her strength and peace. Gracie, have you trusted in Jesus with all your heart? Yes, sir. All right. Upon your profession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, I baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Randy Outlaw and his wife started coming to HC last fall. And God has been a long part of his life. He's been a believer for years. Now he's made the decision to get baptized and is, is excited about being a part of this church family. Randy, have you trusted in Jesus with all your heart? Yes, sir. All right. Upon your profession of faith in him as Lord and Savior, I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Leighton Kelly came to believe and trust in Christ as a teenager. He said that his Lord and Savior has been very impactful in his life, and he wouldn't be where he is today without Jesus Christ. He and his family came to Holland Chapel recently, and he's made the decision to be baptized by immersion. Leighton, have you trusted in Jesus with all your heart? Yes, sir. All right. Upon your profession of faith in Lord Jesus Christ, I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> This is Leighton's son, Gavin Kelly. Gavin is a senior at Benton High School. He's been active in church with his family, and more recently, he's been tuning into God and growing in faith. The Lord is his strength. Gavin, have you trusted in Jesus with all your heart? Yes, sir. All right. Upon your profession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, I baptize you, brother, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Braxton Dixon, uh, a few years ago when he was in high school, he went to a field of faith, confessed his sins, and started following Jesus. Christ has given him peace, acceptance, and purpose. He started coming to HC with his friend Canyon, and he's serious about his faith and following Jesus. 
Braxton, have you trusted in Jesus with all your heart? Yes, sir. All right. Upon your profession of faith, I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Lakin Burnett is in seventh grade at Harmony Grove. She grew up in a Christian home, and a few years ago during COVID, she realized that she wanted to follow Christ and was saved. Lakin knows that she can depend on God 100%. Lakin, uh, do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes, sir, I do. It's on your profession of faith that I baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father who loves you, the Son who died for you, and the Holy Spirit that lived in heaven. Maddie Coleman is a 7th grader at Benton Middle School. Uh, growing up, she knew about Jesus and the gospel, but it wasn't personal. She started coming to HC on Sundays and Wednesdays and realizing that she needed Christ. One night, she was reading her Bible and prayed, asking Jesus to forgive her and come into her life. Maddie, do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes, sir. It's on your profession of faith that I baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father who loves you, the Son who died for you, and the Holy Spirit that lives within McKinley Beggs is another Benton Middle School student. Her story is going to Grandma's church for a VBS and finding what was missing in her life, which was Jesus. She's excited about getting baptized now and publicly showing her faith. McKinley, do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes, sir. It's on your profession of faith that I baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father who loves you, the Son who died for you, and the Holy Spirit that lives within. This is McKinley's older brother, Ethan Beggs. He's in ninth grade at Benton. When he was younger, he had a lot of questions about salvation, and his parents spoke with him about Jesus being the only way to heaven. He decided back then to place his faith in Jesus alone, and now they've plugged into HC, and he's ready to take that next step of baptism. Ethan, do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes, sir. It's on your profession of faith that I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father who loves you, the Son who died for you, and the Holy Spirit that lives within. Gabe Wilbur is in ninth grade at Benton. Uh, Reality Weekend is part of his faith story. It was there that he surrendered his life to Jesus. God has changed his life for the better and has surrounded him with some good Christian friendships. Gabe, do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes, sir. It's on your profession of faith that I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father who loves you, the Son who died for you, and the Holy Spirit that lives within. Layla Evans is a 10th grader at Benton High School. She was introduced to HC by her friend Skyla Hamilton. Since coming to HC, she has been drawn closer to God, and at Reality Weekend, she trusted in Jesus alone as her Lord and Savior. Layla, do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes, sir. It's on your profession of faith that I baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father who loves you, the Son who died for you, and the Holy Spirit that lives within. <laughs> Anna Shaw, also in 10th grade at Benton. Last summer, a friend called her and told her all about how God had changed her life. That influenced her to lean into faith. She started attending church, and last fall, she placed her faith in Jesus alone. She knows that she can always turn to God and is excited about this next step of baptism. Anna, do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes, sir. It's on your profession of faith that I baptize you, my sister. In the name of the Father who loves you, the Son who died for you, and the Holy Spirit that lives within. Jace Johnson is a senior at Benton High School. He said that hearing about Holland, he said that hearing about Holland Chapel and then finally getting to come to church here has changed his life for the better. At Reality Weekend, he places full faith in Jesus and was saved. Jace, do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes, sir. It's on your profession of faith that I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father who loves you, the Son who died for you, and the Holy Spirit that lives within. Yeah. 
Dominic Roy is in 11th grade at Benton. He was invited to HC by a friend. He came to an understanding of what Jesus did for us on the cross and how he died to pay for our sins. And he said, to follow the Lord has been amazing. Dominic, do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes, sir. So on your profession of faith, then I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father who loves you, the Son who died for you, and the Holy Spirit that lives in heaven. <laughs> Randall Bright, also a junior at Benton High School. He was influenced a lot by his older sister following Jesus. At Reality Weekend this year, he fully committed his life to Christ and knew that this was his next step in walking with the Lord. Randall, do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes, sir. It's on your profession of faith that I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father who loves you, the Son who died for you, and the Holy Spirit that lives within. <laughs> Xander, do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes, sir, I do. Then it's on your profession of faith that I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father who loves you, the Son who died for you, and the Holy Spirit that lives within. All right, this is Amelia Smith. She's also a student at Benton Middle School. Uh, she has seen a lot of spiritual transformation in her family recently. And her HCSM group leader, Tiffany, has been a huge influence in helping point her to Jesus. At Reality Weekend this year, she uh, was saved and became a follower of Jesus. Amelia, do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes, sir, I do. Then it's on your profession of faith that I baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father who loves you, the Son who died for you, and the Holy Spirit that lives within. <laughs> And this is Angel Dawson. A few years ago, when she was dating her now husband, uh, her, his grandpa walked her through the good news of Jesus' death and resurrection, and she placed her faith in Jesus then. God changed her life for the better. God has given her joy and happiness, and she's excited about this next step in continuing to follow the Lord. Angel, do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Absolutely. Then it's on your profession of faith that I baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father who loves you, the Son who died for you, and the Holy Spirit that lives within. Church, you may be seated. Does it? I'm not going to ask you. I'm just going to tell you what it does for me. It blesses me and convicts me at the very same time knowing that God sees my heart that God knows what Luke is about in this very moment. I pray that you too feel the weight that God knows. He knows where you're at and what you're all about. My name is Luke. I'm one of the pastors here at Holland Chapel, and I'll just tell you it's a joy to be back with you. Uh, Pastor Nick did a phenomenal job last week of continuing on in our sermon series titled uh, Staying Focused in a New Season. And what Pastor Nick did for us last week was he, he elevated the mission of the church and he reminded us that our mission is people. Were you blessed last week being reminded that our, that our mission is people? That, that our mission is one another? That 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 we should enter into a, a church fellowship mindset, caring for one another, loving one another. We're going we're gonna to talk much about this today as well, but man, just, just sharing in each other's burdens and what a precious time that this church experienced last week, praying for one another, praying that Satan would flee marriages, that, that God would protect marriages, that God would protect His church. I want to encourage you, don't just do that on one Sunday when your pastors say Satan's attacking. Do that every single day. Pray for one another. Pray for your own marriage. Pray for your own family. Pray for your life that Satan would stay far away. 
This morning, I I hope to continue with this mindset of of staying focused in a new season because I want to remind us that, that God is bringing us into a new season. Can we celebrate the three that said yes to Jesus this morning? Can we celebrate them? Church, this very next worship service, we're going to baptize 19 more. 19 more. Can we celebrate that? We're, we're in a new season. God is blessing. People are coming to know Jesus as Savior. And I'm in awe of what He's doing. But when we enter into a new season, we've got to be, we've got to be prepared. We've got to be, we've got to be ready. So today, I want us to think about this mindset of, of staying focused on the basics. So if you're a note taker, you're writing stuff down, I want, you to, I want you to hang on to this. Stay focused on the basics. In the early 2000s, there was a movie that hit the scenes called Friday Night Lights. Do you remember it? You've seen it? Raise your hand. It's okay. It's PG-13. We can say, yeah, we watched it in church. Friday Night Lights, and within that movie, there was a character named James Miles. I can't say his nickname in church with a straight face, so I won't say it. But he was the star running back of the team. And if you're thinking about his nickname right now, you know exactly who I'm talking about. We'll just call him Miles. Boy, he was fast. And he was D1 bound. Like, man, he was a star. They knew that if they had him on the team, they were unstoppable. And one day within the movie, they're... uh, They're they're, they're in the weight room. They're preparing. They're getting ready. He walks in all hot shot. He's a little cocky. I'll be honest with you. And he's he's walking around. And and, uh, before the scene ends, he's walking out the door. And they say, hey, Miles, you going to lift today, man? He said, nah, this is God given. And he walks out. He doesn't lift. He doesn't do the basics. Within a game or two later, y'all, if y'all remember the movie, remember the story, he blows out his knee, Right? Tragic. Everybody starts crying. They're like, man, our season's going down the drain. Well, I want you to learn from the running back, Miles. He, he skipped leg day. You can't skip leg day. He, 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 he forgot the basics. He was like, no, this is God-given. You, you see, he thought he had reached the pinnacle. He was like, I, I've, I've done everything I need to do. This is God-given. I'm good. I don't need to train. I don't need to work out. I don't need... The basics. And what happened? Came back to Biden, didn't it? Blew out his knee. Well, I'm telling you a story about Friday Night Lights. Listen, church. If we think we've arrived, if we think that we've, we've accomplished everything that we're going to accomplish, like that, that we've reached the top, that's just when Satan wants to attack. We, we cannot skip leg day as a church. We, we cannot skip the basics. We've not reached the top. We've not reached the pinnacle. Like We have to stay focused on the basics. What are the basics here at Holland Chapel? If you're a note taker, I want you to write these down. Worshiping, serving, and connecting. Worship, serve, connect. These are the basics here at Holland Chapel. And as God brings our church into a new season, we may be tempted to skip the basics. We may be tempted to think that, that we've arrived. We, we may be tempted to think, I can, I can skip something. May God's blessing. The room is filling. People are coming to Jesus. Like things are great. I can skip some of the basics. You cannot skip the basics. We've got to stay focused. We've got to maintain focus in whatever season God is bringing us in. So I want to start this off by uh, unfolding and talking about the first one, worship. So I want you to write that down. Keep things in focus, right? Keep, Keep doing the basics. The first one is worshiping. We as a church have to make sure that the worship gatherings are of primary focus for you and your family. That that being here is important. That being here amongst believers is elevated in your life, that making sure that you are here in the worship gathering. Worship gatherings, Sunday morning here in the context of Holland Chapel, edifies one another. 
We can, we can edify. What do I mean by that word, edify? Lift each other up. That's what, that's what the worship gatherings can do for the child of God. He can lift you up. Hebrews chapter 10, 24 and 25. You've heard it several times. We're going to read it again. It says, let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. Let us think about ways to motivate one another. Verse 25, and let us not neglect our meeting together, as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of His return is drawing near. I want you to think about this gathering, if you will, for a moment. I want you to to go there in your mind. I want you to think about the worship gathering of Holland Chapel. And if I was to put money on it right now, what's going through your mind is probably not your favorite song or your favorite sermon, but of a person or the people of Holland Chapel. That's where my mind goes when I think about the gathering. That's where my mind goes when I think about worshiping with you. My my mind goes to you and, and how precious my church family is and how much I love being here with you worshiping our Savior. And my mind especially goes to those that are older than me in the faith. Those that have been following Jesus for a long time. I spoke to Mike and Patsy Culp this morning. I said, how long have I been part of Holland Chapel? We're going on 25 years. Like she knew. Like it was an anniversary. Like she knew. Because she values you. She, she values worshiping with you. Um, my mind goes to the, the older saints. In the next worship gathering, this very back row back here in front of this window is going to be full of older saints in their 80s. And they, they have every excuse known to man not to be here. Their bodies hurt. They're tired. They're sore. Man, they're, they're, they're battling health. You name it. They, they have every excuse, but they continue to deny the excuses because they love you and they love the Lord. They want to be here. They want to be here worshiping because they know the value of the gathering. That They know that being here edifies one another. It, it lifts one another up. It, it motivates us to love and good works. Like the worship gathering is important, but what happens in a new season when God starts to bless? Like what happens? Man, the room starts to get full. And we start to think, man, I, am I really needed? Will they even notice if I'm here or not? Perhaps my seat could go to someone else. You think about the excuse, and your pastors have probably heard it. There is no excuse for stepping outside of the gathering. There, there, there's no excuse, there's no justification for, for, for missing the gathering. I want to warn you, you might might have these thoughts brought into your mind as the season begins to unfold, as the room begins to grow, as people start to to flood the the, the aisles and the the seats. Like you're going to think, well, it's just, it's not that, man, they're not going to miss me. Man, the, the number count's going up every week. Like I'm not needed. That's foolish. You're needed. God wants you here, He wants you here worshiping. He wants you here to, to help others, to motivate others, to love and good works. And I want you to think about this for a moment. Have you ever thought about your attendance as a form of evangelism? Have you ever thought about that? Have you ever thought that God can use you being here, worshiping Him as a form of evangelism? I want to blow your minds. I want you to go to Scripture. I want you to go to Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 14. We're going to look at 24 and 25. We've got to unpack it for a moment, and then we'll, we'll see what the Lord has for us. Chapter 14, 24 and 25. But if all you are, are uh, but if all of you are prophesying and unbelievers are people who don't understand these things, come into your meeting. They will be convicted of sin and judged by what you say. As they listen 
their secret thoughts will be exposed and they will fall to their knees and worship God, declaring, God is truly here among you. What's happening in this particular chapter? Paul is talking about the structure of worship. He's talking about the use of spiritual gifts within the worship gathering. He goes on to talk about uh, speaking in tongues and prophesying and interpretation. We're not here to dive into all that today. But what I want you to get from this particular passage is when the people of God gather to worship God using their spiritual gifts, worshiping Him, and unbelievers come in, it bears witness to a holy God. That, that God can use the worship gathering to bring people to Himself. Do you believe that, Holland Chapel? So I want you to start thinking about your attendance. I want you to start thinking about your worship. I want you to start thinking about your faithful commitment to this gathering as a form of evangelism. And when you do that, and you look at all the excuses on the calendar to miss worship gathering, I want you to think about a lost soul that may not come to Christ because you're not here. I want you to think about all those unnecessary things that we fill our calendar with that, that, that pull us away from the importance of worshiping here with your church. So I'm not here today to talk about ball tournaments and extracurricular activities and everything you can imagine to take us out of this place. I, I'm trusting that the Holy Spirit is going to convict you on a Sunday morning to be here. So that when you're here, you, you know that, man, I have a purpose far greater than just listening to what Pastor Luke has to say. Like me being in here, like in, in the seat, worshiping is a form of evangelism that God can use to bring a lost person to Jesus Christ. That by them walking in here and seeing what we are doing as a church, worshiping a holy God will bring about conviction, repentance, and life change. I've seen it happen. Have you? God can use the worship gathering to bring people to Himself. Make sure that in this new season, you're not searching for excuses not to be here. God wants you here. He wants to use His church to bring people to Himself. Make sure that you are elevating the worship gathering, don't stop the basics in this new season. The second thing I want you to write down is serve. We've got to worship, we've got to be here. But we also need to serve Him. I thought about this point, this thought, one of these three main things that we elevate here at Holland Chapel, and I thought, man, what's the best way What's the best way to dive in to the thought of serving? And there's really, in my mind, by the way, I, I teach you the way that I want to be taught. There, there's, there's no better way than to ask a question. Jesus did that a lot. I want to pose a question, and I mean it so sincerely. Are you Serving Him. Think about it. You may need to write that down. You may need to take a note in your phone. Or maybe you just need to sit still for a second and process that. Are you serving Him? Let's make it more specific. Are you serving Him in the context of Holland Chapel? Are, are, are you serving Him in the context of that local church mindset? Are you serving the Lord? It's a tough question, isn't it? Because many times when we're, we're looking at worship, serve, and, and connect, man, you're like, yeah, I'm here on the first one. Like, dude, you're preaching to the wrong crowd. You need to find the ones that aren't here and preach about, about being in church. Like, we're here, dude. And then we go to this next one, serve. Ah, he had to go there. He had to go there. Like I was doing good. Like my attendance is great. But I'm simply here to take part in the gathering. And that's it. Are you serving Him? Here's what happens in a new season. Here's what happens when God blesses and, and He adds to churches 
numerically, spiritually, you name it, here's what happens. We might drop our kids off at HC Kids and we look at a room full of volunteers and we think they don't need me. We may drive around the loop on Wednesday night, kick our 15-year-old out, and we praise the Lord for that opportunity. And we think, man, I see pictures on social media that they've got help. They've got all the help they need. Or, Or we walk in here on Sunday morning and the lights are on. Things smell good. Seats are pretty nice. Like seems that everything's going good. They don't need my finances. Everything's good. Those are all lies of Satan. Those are all lies. It's right the opposite. When churches are growing, when God is blessing, when ministries are fruitful, there is always a need for service. That's that's when the need increases. That's when we need more people to serve. That's when we need more people to give. That's when we need more input, more buy-in from the people of God is when He's blessing. That's when we need it. That's when He needs servants to to rise up. So listen to me now. I'm telling you of all the things you might be tempted to think. So when you come in here, Please don't be be tempted to think that we've got all our bases covered. We don't. But please don't think, man, this church, like they don't don't need me. Like they're they're, they're good. That's a lie. We need you. Your your, your church needs you. Your church needs you to serve. So I want you to evaluate your life right now. And I want you to ask yourself the question, am I serving Him? Am I serving the Lord? Or do I come up with every excuse possible not to serve Him? And let me tell you something. When your perspective on serving the Lord changes from serving men to serving Him, it will change your life. I can stand up here every single week and put a pretty good guilt trip on you, and we might get one or two people a week to dive into something. But that may not last. And you may have served before and got burned. You're like, I'm not doing that again. Listen to me. Your your, your pastors, your, your ministry leaders may not tell you enough thank you. I'm sorry for that. But you don't serve me. You don't serve Amanda. You don't serve Pastor Nick. You you don't serve a person. You, you, You serve the person, and that's God. You serve Him. Not man. I want to look at Scripture and hopefully this encourages you in your service or encourages you to service. Colossians 3, we're going to read from the English Standard Version, 22 through 24. It says, Bond servants, obey in everything those who are your earthly masters. Not by way of eye service. What does that mean? We don't serve to gain the approval of people. As people pleasers. But with sincerity of heart. Fearing the Lord. Whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men. Knowing that from the Lord you will receive the inheritance as your reward. You are serving the Lord Christ. You're not serving men. You're, you're not serving HC kids. You, you're, you're not serving student ministry. You're, you're not serving in the kitchen. You're, you're not serving wherever it is that you're playing. You're serving the Lord. And let me tell you, church, listen to me. When your perspective shifts from, man, I'm just signing up because like they need me. Like I can just be there. I can fill a spot. Like when it, when it shifts from that to I get to serve King Jesus, it'll change your life. I'm serving King Jesus because this is what He asks of me. I'm serving King Jesus because I want to be obedient. Like I'm serving King Jesus because I want lost people to come to know Him. Like that'll change your life, church. Change your life. And all those opportunities, all those Wednesday nights, all those Sunday mornings, all those small group gatherings, what do you got to clean your house? I've done it for a decade. Like man, it, 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 it puts worth and value on what you're doing. You're not serving men, you're serving your king. Will you do it? 
Will you serve him? But in a new season, listen to me, church. You're going to be tempted to think, Holland Chapel doesn't need me. That's a lie from hell. Your church needs you. Your church needs you to serve. King Jesus needs you to serve him. He wants you to serve him. That's what being obedient is all about. Serving Jesus. Doing what he asks you to do. So again, we'll go back to the very beginning. That first question. Are you serving him? Are you serving him? The next thing I want you to write down is connect. Worship, serve, connect. Pastor Nick did a phenomenal job. I'll repeat that last week. I'm talking about the importance of, of gathering. The, the importance of God's people knowing one another, loving each other, sharing in each other's burdens. Like that's, He did a wonderful job. I don't have to spend a whole lot of time on it because he did a fantastic job. But are you connecting? Are you, are you finding your people? Again, in a new season, here's what you might be tempted to think. Man, in that large church, I can't know everybody. So many times, people search out large churches so they can show up and not be seen and leave and not be seen. Like that's what they want. They want to show up, attend a gathering, and leave and not find connection. That's not the body of Christ, church. That's not you being plugged in to the body of Christ. That's simply you attending a gathering. That's you attending a service. Are you connecting with the body of Christ? Or are you being plugged in? But the pastors here, trust me, like, like we, we get it. I, I struggle to keep up with all the names and the faces. Do you feel that way right now? Raise your hand. Do you feel that way? Man, it's such a struggle. Listen, I've, I've been a part of Holland Chapel uh, in some form or fashion since I was about 14 years old. I've been around here a long time. And, and this, this church continues to evolve and change and, and new people and, and new faces. And man, it's tough to keep up with everybody. I've got a burden for that. Uh, the pastors were, were trying everything that we can to get to know everybody the best we can. But, but, but simply, it's simply not going to be possible to know everyone really well. So here at Holland Chapel, here's what, we, here's what we want to say. We don't expect you to know everyone. But we expect you to know someone really well. We, we want you to be invested in a small group dynamic. Here at Holland Chapel, those are life groups, connect groups, and growth groups. We, we want you plugged in to that smaller environment. You see, when that happens, it can take a really large gathering and make it feel real small. And, and when we enter into those small group gatherings, that's where connections found. Absolutely, we can gather here and we can worship together. We can praise the Lord together. And He can use this environment without a doubt. But chances are the person back there doesn't really know the person up here and vice versa. Man, it's just hard to connect in this environment. So we want you to connect in smaller environments. And I believe when that happens, God is glorified. I believe God, God is, is glorified when the, the, the people of God gather around His Word and fellowship with one another, sharing in each other's burdens. We're going to read Scripture here in just a moment. But listen to me. Find connection. Coming here and just attending a worship gathering is not being a part of the body of Christ. You're simply observing a worship service. Like, are, are you a part of the body of Christ? Are, are you finding connection? Remember the temptation as this church grows, as God blesses. You're going to be tempted to think, man, I could just show up and leave. Nobody know that I was there or not there. Like, man, I could just... Slide around and go unnoticed. So many people want that. But listen, that's not being a part of the body of Christ. When connection happens, God is glorified. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 11. It says, so encourage each other and build each other up. 
just as you are already doing. Of course, we can encourage one another in this environment. We can build one another up in this environment. But it's far easier to do that in a small group dynamic. Just this morning, as I was in my office running over this message, I sent the men in my life group a text. Like we, we have a group chat going. Yeah, guys do group chats too, ladies. Have a group chat going. And, and I sent the, the guys in my group a short message, something along the lines, hey, I'm preaching about finding connection at Holland Chapel to my connect group. I said, would you pray for it? And they were like, absolutely. One guy wrote back, without hesitation. That's connection. That, that, that's finding your people. That, that's finding a smaller group within this large setting that can be there for you, that can pray for you, that can share uh, in your burdens with you, that can rejoice with you, that can cry with you, that can wrap their arms around you in life's darkest moments. Like, we need that, church. Like, we need one another. Have you found it? Or are you simply attending a worship gathering? Or are you finding connection within the body of Christ. There's a big difference. Are you finding connection? Galatians chapter 6, verse 2. Share each other's burdens. Boy, that's tough, isn't it? Share each other's burdens. And in this way, listen to this, obey the law of Christ. The Word of God tells us to share in one another's burdens. It's pretty difficult to do in this setting, isn't it? I oftentimes share with you my burdens. I don't go into a lot of detail, but I share with you what's going on simply because I have a microphone in this time. But if I was to bring you a microphone, would you do the same? Probably not. But where you would do it, hopefully, is in a small group dynamic. Where hopefully you can not know everyone in this building, but you can know someone really well, and you can go to that group and you can share your burdens with them. The Word of God tells us to, church. And listen to me. If, if you're one of, those, uh, one of those people, you're one of those families that, that simply attend you're coming here uh, uh, to receive the, the word, to, to join in worship. Listen, I praise God for that. Do you hear me? Like, I'm so thankful you're here. I don't want you to get the wrong impression. Like, I'm so thankful you're here. But there is so much more for you within the body of Christ than just being here on Sunday morning. There's so much more. So I want to encourage you right now Find connection. You can do that through the Connect card or the Connect corner. We want you to connect. Are you picking up on that, Holland Chapel? We want you to connect with someone. We want you to connect with a group. That's where your relationship with Christ can flourish. You can share in one another's burdens. You can pray for each other. You can grow closer to Jesus Christ. We want you to find connections. Do not believe the lie in this new season that connection doesn't matter. Connection matters. God wants what's best for you, and we believe here as your pastors at Holland Chapel that connection is really good for you. The connection with other believers will benefit you and your walk with Christ. So I know today has been a little different, right? But I want to encourage you in this new season. Church, listen to me. You honing in still? We want you to worship. We want you to elevate the importance of the worship gathering so much so that your attendance is evangelism. And man, we want you to serve. We want you to find your place and plug in. We don't want you to believe the lie that all spots are full and I'm not needed. That's a lie. You're needed. And then we want you to find meaningful connection 
within the body of Christ. Let me pray for you. God, we love you. Thank you so much for your word. Thank you for the instruction that it gives. Thank you for the conviction that it provides. And God, I pray for us, Holland Chapel as a church, in this new season, that we would fight the temptation that we discussed this morning. That we would make sure that worship gatherings maintain their priority in our lives. And that we would push back every excuse possible to miss the meeting. And that also, God, we would, we would serve many people in this room at this very moment have never served you in the local context of the church. And God, they're missing out on a blessing. They're missing out on the reward of obedience, of serving you in your church. And I pray that today would be the very day that to say enough's enough. I'm done with excuses. I'm going to serve the church. God, you're moving here and I'm going to take part in it. And then also connection, God. I think so many people struggle with this because they struggle with being vulnerable. They, they, they're struggling with sitting face to face with one another, talking about the struggles of life. And, and I want to encourage your church and pray for your church this morning that those that are missing connection would find it. That they would say yes to a small group connection here at Holland Chapel. Thank you, God, for your word. Thank you for instructing us, for teaching us, for convicting us and reminding us. And God, we praise you for your son, Jesus. And we ask everything in this precious and holy name. Amen.